So now that the instrument system is ready, um, we can start an analysis. So if we come to the first tab and click Create Analysis, we are going to create analysis from a, a, by acquiring new data. Um, and we're going to use a default analysis method that I've set up for the intact map, um, which has the NIST map sequence in it already. Um, great, that's what I want to call it. And this is the bioaccord system that's connected to this server that you're viewing at the moment and I'm ready to go. Okay, so if you've used any analytical instrumentation before, this sample list will probably look a very familiar format. Um, so I'm going to add my samples um, in this table. Um, so it is NISMAB. Um, I, I'm gonna say that it's uh, 0.5 mins per mil. My colleague very kindly made this up for me. Um, and she's put it in sample it's in B1. So I've just typed that in there, but you can also do it from here and click replace position in sample list. Um, and I'm going to inject one microliter, so about 500 nanograms. Okay, and we're good to go. Um, so I'm just gonna show you an extra window that you can open if you'd like. You might not want to have this open. And this just gives you a readout on the different modules on the mass spectrometer, which is particularly useful because I'm not there in person. Um, and I can see that at the moment it's just in standby mode. Um, so I want to set it going to my initial conditions. So you can see that the flow has now increased to uh, 0.4 millimetres. Um, and it's a 5.5 um, minutes gradient that I'm running here. Uh, well, whole run. Um, which is really just for a buffer exchange for my um, my sample. Um, but you can use the chromatography to um, separate different species um, if you'd like. And you can see that all my modules are green, so um, I'm happy that they are all communicating um, nicely, even though I can't see them in person. And I'm just waiting for the pressure on my column to decrease so that I know um, the column is ready um, to have the sample loaded onto it. Perfect, okay we are ready to go so I'm just going to click start and then I'm going to run all samples and make sure that they're processed and saved. Here we go. So initially the um, biocord will actually run a lock mass sample um, to check that the calibration is still valid and um, that the detector setup is. Um, and it will do that at the beginning and end of, of every sample that it runs to always ensure your data quality. Um, so at the moment, it doesn't matter because um, we know that our calibration is valid. Um, but in a month's time, it will still be doing those checks. And actually, the biorecord will tell you when your calibration isn't valid anymore. Um, so you know when you would have to run it again. But the calibration is very stable. Okay, I'm gonna come back when the protein is coming off the column, so about 1.7 minutes, and we can have a sneak peek at the data. And here's the protein peak now. So we've got different traces um, given as the live acquisition. And at the bottom, um, we've got the TIC, so the, the readout from the mass spectrometer. So if I combine that, uh, you'll see this characteristic charge state distribution that we expect for proteins. And for a protein of um, the size of a, a MAP, so 150 kilodaltons, it's common to have many um, different charge states. Um, so each of these cluster of peaks is a different charge state of increasing charge. And if we zoom in on those, you can see that for a particular charge state, we've got the different glycoforms present on the map and um, giving different peaks. So I'm gonna let that chromatography finish now and the software will actually automatically process and report the data itself. 
Okay, the sample ha has completed now. You can see sample is completed. And if we go to review, we'll be able to look at the data. So you can see on the um, bottom left here, we've got the TUV data. So the data that's been collected at 280 nanometers. Um, and we've also got the readout from the mass spectrometer. Um, both of the different detectors showing this peak um, where the protein's been eluted. The software then um, combines the mass spectrometry data under this peak to give us the raw data. So if I um, zoom in on that, then you'll be able to see. Here we are. And again, that nice characteristic um, charge distribution of nice sharp peaks. Um, and then the software then um, processes the data to give us the deconvolved masses. I'll show you that now. There we have the processed masses from the software um, showing the major uh, proteoforms in the sample. So the software can go one step further and identify the species based on the expected post-translational modifications and glycans for um, biotherapeutics. Um, so it will take the centroided data um, from these peaks. If we go to the component plot, you can see these centroids have um, now been identified. And when we look at the table um, up here, we can see the, those components and the associated information. So their intensity and um, their observed masses compared to what is expected um, and their mass error, um, which is um, within 15 ppm, um, which is often what we observe. So great, so that's how you can review the data on the BioRecord. You can actually also change the format of these views in many different ways, which we will show you in more detail in future videos. Um, but you can also get the software to automatically produce a report for you. So if I go up to this tab, it will take us through to the Unify report um, that has been automatically generated in PDF. And you can see um, we can flick between the pages and you can configure these um, reports in whatever way you would like and create a template so that if you always produce your results in a particular way, it will automatically generate for you. Um, so this is just a simple template where we've got the raw data and the deconvolved data. And then finally, um, the component table and, and component plot. So I hope you've enjoyed that little video on the biochords and intact mass analysis of biotherapeutics.